Hey everybody, DJ Porkchop hanging out with you in the shop today on a Tuesday. I'm doing a VR to somebody who asked for a parts list for this checkering cradle. I think I said I was going to do a video prior to and I never did. Um, so let's just go ahead and get with it. Notice I have my parts list and I've got their parts list. I'm going to leave this here for a minute so you can pause it and copy it down if you want to. Okay. And then I have some images that I'll show you too in this video. I can't share this file with you because it's protected uh, copyrighted material. But I'll go over the diagrams with you nonetheless. But I cannot share that file. I apologize for that. Um, let's dig right on into it. I didn't add the two before by eight on my list. Why? Because it's scrap. See where that hole? I've used this before. This was part of my son's old bunk bed. This checkering cradle. Waste well, not, want not. So, you will need a two by four. A eight inch, eight foot, an eight footer. Get a stud. They're cheap. You can put a couple bucks. Or if you got some scrap. This one here, I believe was 36 inches long I made it and these two uprights I believe are five inches a piece you'll see it in the diagram five inches I believe and I've got two of those okay parts here's my parts list 36 inch piece of threaded rod I didn't go You'll notice uh, two five six sixteenth or uh, by five and a half inch hex bolts. I don't know what that's all about, so I didn't do that. Maybe I'm reading that wrong, but it didn't make a lot of sense to me. I know they wanted me to use hex bolts for here. What I did was I bought a piece of 36 inch threaded rod at 5 sixteenths. I cut those to whatever the dimensions say. I think it's 5 or 6 inches in the schematics. We'll see that later. So I used the threaded rod here, here, as well as from here down to here. That's where the threaded rod comes in. The hex nuts. I used hex nuts here and here as well as in here in your uprights and to hold it on the bottom and also over here one and then one, two and then the third one over here that's the hex nuts two five sixteenths lock washers I used those underneath here on each end. Okay. What else we got? Wing nuts. This is where I shorted myself and I wished I didn't. Well, I got to get a couple more. Four of them. Why do I say four? Because you need one, two, three to adjust your stock and then the fourth one would be right here to make this adjuster easy. So instead you got to loosen this up and come over here, loosen this. If I just had a wing nut there, it would make life a lot easier. I wouldn't have to piddle with it. See what I'm saying? So ditch the lock, the, the hex bolt nut here. Don't use that. Use a wing nut instead. As well as right here. It will make your life a lot easier. Not that it takes so long to adjust it, but... For us lazy folks, that's a tip. 5 16 flat washers, I used eight of them. Again, here, here, right here, right here, 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 and then one here, and underneath. Those are my flat washers. I'm sorry for making you dizzy with the camera. One. 5 16 dowel rod. I think 12 inches will get you by. I bought a 36 inch stick. I try to keep some on hand for plugging holes and doing other things. They go 
right here. You're going to go about an inch and a half, two inches up in, and two inch and a half, two inches down. What I did was I cut it off, I crimped one end, and I filled the hole with wood glue, and I shoved that dowel up in there and tapped it with a with the uh, with the end of my grace hammer. And what them crimps or splines did was allowed that glue to squeeze out in between to make good contact all the way around. So you can get by with a little one footer if you want, if you have no more use for dowel rods, but them are the only two places you're going to use those if you build this style checker and cradle. One three inch PVC cap. Why do I have that there? Because that's where the the nose of your stock's going to fit into if you so choose to do it this way. You can also grind it down to a blunt point and in your gun stock for checkering lab there's a hole there. It's got foam in it now. You can put that in there and chuck it up. I put some foam out of my muzzle loader kit where I use a rag, a shop rag, and I stick it in there and it holds that nice and firm okay I loosen this up loosen my wing nut up give me enough travel here maybe give it a little more see I didn't give myself enough there let me try that again it's because of that rag in there I usually use foam it's real nice and thin Tighten it down, which won't move, and notice our stock spins freely. I don't like that rag in there, and this is why. So, you'll see in another picture, they built a Lexan piece to hold this stock right here, nice and firm. I can see why. Maybe I'll make one for future use, but for the SDI project. I did not use one, and this is a Weatherby stock, by the way. You can tell it's a defect. There's a split here. There was another. Oh, there's another one right here. So that's about it. I don't know that there's a lot more that I can break down and tell you, but I will tell you this. I think I mentioned it in another video. Make sure if you go this route that your drill bit is long enough. Mine wasn't. It stopped about three quarters of an inch shy. I had to flip it and drill and them holes didn't line up. I had to waller them out a little bit. Don't forget these two holes. These are very important. These are right in the middle. What that is for is you move that end to right here and that from here to here allows you to chuck up shotgun stocks. And if you take and mount a, a, a a four, uh, four stock for a shotgun to a piece of uh, a one by piece of wood or something you can chuck that up in there and spin your four stock too so you can go I'm gonna add some links to uh, Larry Potterfield you probably you can find him on Midway USA uh, how to checker a stock and he shows you his cradle kinda you can see also another guy named Mark Novak over at CN Arsenal their YouTube channel he uses a checkering cradle with a piece of 90 degree angle iron with a hole in it and then another hole where his, where his adjustable rod goes through and instead of having two it's just the one he cinches it down tight that's another way to do it makes it a little easier than going with the dowel rod but I used the rod like they said because it keeps that from moving if 
your bolt wants to come loose so that's about all I have to say about this again if you have any more questions please feel free to get with me about it this was for the checkering lab or GSL 100 or something for the Sonoran Desert Institute if you're not going to SDI and you just want to talk about this cradle go ahead and give me some comments and we'll uh, talk about it I have no issues at all I'm a bucket mouth so well that we're gonna get out of here I got another little project I'm gonna be working on for a little while capstone so that would be that anyway I'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here I'll catch up with you guys later thanks for tuning in hit the subscribe and the like buttons and all that good jazz and uh, have fun shooting do it safely do it legal spread the word have fun join an organization any gun rights organization you choose just join one we're fighting for our freedoms now folks take care bye hey everybody I forgot to tell you compared to my checkering cradle how right here mine came straight down and over in an L shape kinda look at these how they go up I like this one better because the way it goes up but mine's pretty functional it works real nice I just want to show you that and there's a close-up of that Lexan uh, butt holder that I was telling you about that works out real nice I'm gonna build one of those for future use but right now I don't have one so I'll go ahead and include a snapshot of this in the uh, video as well for you.